Welcome to Butler Studio Virtual. In this video, we will explain the infamous block-in stage. Before we start the block-in, I want to talk a little bit about the photographs, the gridding of the photographs, and gathering and pinning those photographs onto a board, as you see me doing here. I talked a little bit about that in the previous video in terms of preparing photographs before you paint, but I think it's a good idea to gather up more than one photograph and not hinge all your hopes and dreams onto one single solitary painting. So go through your photographs and blow them up on a photocopier if you can and pin them up on a board in front of you. This is a photograph I'm going to use to show you a blocking in the painting later, but I'm going to start this photograph out by gridding it. And this is one way of gridding a photograph. I'm going to take the photograph itself and divide it from corner to corner, which gives me the middle, and you'll see the vertical line that I've dropped there. And then each of the rectangles from there, I'm going to divide them again, which will give me my next vertical. And I can measure this out with a ruler, of course, but I think this is more fun. And it's going to show you some things uh, that just measuring it out won't do. As you see me breaking down the next diagonal here, you're going to start to see what I like to think of as a kind of a woven pattern. And it's one of the reasons why I like to grid the photograph like this. And you really start to appreciate the old masters and what they were trying to do with compositions. Some of these diagonal lines I like to think of uh, as the possibilities of where the viewer's eye will go. So now we're on the canvas and you'll see me using chalk here along with the T-square and a yardstick to make the same diagonals. And it's important to know that the proportions are the same here as the photograph. My photograph was 4.75 by 10.1 inches and my canvas here is 33 by 70. One of the ways to know that your proportions are correct is you take the small number and you divide it by the big number. So 4.75 divided by 10.1 inches is 0.47. And my big canvas here, which is 33 divided by 70, is also 0.47. So with any luck, everything should line up and all my proportions should be right. So this is my completed grid on canvas, along with my photograph I'm holding up here. And I normally don't take it quite to this level, but I wanted to show you why these circles are so important in terms of where to lead the viewer's eye. And we really get into the rule of thirds in terms of placement of where there's good places to put main elements in a composition. And that's really why we went to all this effort. And that's why the great masters did also. Okay, so finally on to oil paint here. And you'll see me start to block in with a thin wash of brown. So lots of paint thinner. And I'm focusing on mark making here using some different tools. And that's important, I think, in the blocking stage. You use a lot of different tools to make a lot of different marks. You're trying to focus on shapes and shape making and really overgeneralize and squint down on your photograph to see those shapes. One of the other quick things I like about the blocking stage is the term blocking um, or blocking a stage is used in theater too. And I really like to think about that here in terms of just get things on stage. Let me see what the shapes do. And then I get to back up and really move things around one side or the other, up, down, left, right. One of the most important things I can tell you in this video is really what the blocking stage is about is setting up relationships. So there are seven and only seven elements in art that are the most basic. They're color, line, shape, form, texture, space, and value. And if you think about that for a second, we already tackled line uh, in some of our diagonals and mapping it out. And we just tackled shape in some of these initial thin washes. And you see me here start to tackle uh, the next one, which is going to be value uh, a little bit there in the sky with some of the yellows and the whites. And then I'm going to start to tackle color. And notice where I'm starting to tackle it at. I'm going to start right in that golden section of a th where a third meets a third there. So I'm starting in on color, uh, basically tackling value a little bit, color a little bit, and a little bit with uh, shape making in there. I think it's important to note too which of the elements you're not going to tackle on the block end to help you understand better what a block end does and what you're working with. Um, you're not going to see form in a block end because form is really creating a sense of three dimensional space. And a block end is really about finding flat 
shapes to see what the uh, shapes do. Um, just like in theater, a block in would be blocking a stage just to see what the actor looks like, stage left, stage right, upstage, downstage. And really that's what shape is. Shape should be flat. Um, you, the other one you're not going to see a lot of is texture. Uh, texture uh, gets into spe specific things in terms of uh, what things are. And if you think about what a shape is, a shape is really abstract. It's not a thing. I, I like the term. Um, when you think about a shape, uh, you shouldn't be thinking about what it is. You shouldn't be thinking about it as a thing at all. It's just an abstract shape you're working with. And the last one you're not going to see a lot of in the blocking stage is space. And space really means depth in terms of separation of foreground, middle ground, background, and really getting a separation between the three. So again, the three you will see in a block in would be uh, a basic sense of color, uh, line that we used, shape that we're using here, and value. Those are the, really the four you're, you're tackling. And form, texture, and space really need to take a back seat in the block in stage. Notice I'm continuing to use shape here as I do what I like to call carving, which is I'm taking different tools here um, on top of and into the shapes I've already made with the initial washes and basically carving into it with uh, a light here in terms of the water and also the tops of those trees a little bit. Let's take a little break from the canvas here just to show you my palette real quick. And this is my palette with five different pieces of colored paper gray uh, with my corresponding color uh, on top of it. And believe it or not, each of those colors you see on top are actually the same values of paper underneath. And in order to show you that, I'm gonna show you this in a second with a red filter over top and you're gonna see the color disappear. All of a sudden it's like magic 3D glasses. And we can see here that uh, each of the corresponding colors is the same as the black and white paper uh, colored grays underneath or close enough. And I pre mixed some of my colors here on purpose to coordinate and line up with these specific grays to give me a nice variety of value in my block in. And that really is the whole point. So with these different values and colors in mind, you're gonna see me start to block in some of the rest of the canvas, starting really in the focal point and fanning my way out. So now that I've tackled a little bit of value in my block in, I wanna go ahead and tackle the next element, which is color. And one of the most interesting things with color in terms of relationship is the relationship of warm and cool. Um, so I can try out a little bit of that here in my block in. You can see me here in a second. Uh, put an orange down next to the reeds here. And I'm starting to wonder if I can use a, a warm in the shadow and have a cool in terms of the light. And again, having those two opposites really works well together. So a cool light, warm shadow, or sometimes you can have the opposite, a warm light and a cool shadow. So I tried a little bit of that deeper orange in the bottom section of the reeds, and I'm gonna start here in the sky. If that orange, deeper orange can work in the bottom, I should be able to get with a lighter orange in the sky as I come away from that cool white light in the sky. And you can see me try to transition that now uh, a little bit into the focal area. So you see me take a quick step back here because I realize I have the next relationship that I'm after, which is color theory. Um, so I've got, as I put in that orange, yellow in the sky, I've got that purple just below it in that mountain area. And I realize those are nice complementary colors. So that's another relationship color is uh, that of complements. So I've got orange, yellow, uh, purple, blue in there, and I have green, and I'm gonna try to get away with a real deep red in the shadow. So I've worked some of those intermediate middle values in the water and the sky and a little bit in the focal point. And you can see me do the next thing here, which is basically to move the viewer's eye away from the focal point and build a bridge into another area or a smaller area of focal point. As I move away from the main focal area into a secondary focal point on the right here, I realize what I have here really is the essence of what a block in is, which is figuring out the relationships in the painting or basically translating uh, the painting from the photograph into paint and the elements of art. So I have elements of uh, line, I have elements of shape, I have elements of value, and I have elements of color. And I'm gonna pause here and really slow down and explain each of those. And again, that is the block in, figuring out what those things are.
figuring out the relationships. So you remember at the beginning, we used line to help us find uh, focal areas in terms of main focal areas and also some secondary focal point ideas. After that, we did some initial washes with the shapes, and then we, then we started in on shape making with our different values and colors. And one of the things I noticed with shape here is shapes are really soft in the background in this painting and also very sharp in the foreground. Next up, I started to work with value on my palette, and I pre-mixed five different values and started to apply them in my focal area and throughout the rest of the painting. And that gave me a really nice range within my values. And last but not least, I started to work with number four, which is color. In terms of my color temperature first, I noticed that I had cool light, which meant I should have a warmer shadow. And I started to work with that throughout. Along with laying in those temperatures, I started to notice that I had a color theory that, that emerged out of the painting which was really um, a series of blue, greens, and red oranges. And the corresponding complements to that, I had a purple that worked beautifully there with the uh, orange, yellow, which gave me the green, red too. So I really have two pairs of complements I'm working with here throughout the rest of the painting. So this is really the finish of the blocking stage as I move over to the right side of the canvas here. And I hope this was helpful in terms of what I would think are the most important parts of the blocking stage. And if this was helpful, please like, comment, or share this video. And please go ahead and click subscribe on my YouTube channel as we get going here. And I hope to make many more of these videos in the future. And thanks for watching.